All right, let's see if we can do this. So this one is case two, an 18 year old male with an intraarticular knee mass. All right. And I wish, this is one of these times I wish I had these scanned already, but well, we can't have all the things we want because this would be nice to see from ultra low power. So I'm gonna scroll around here. The pretty good size lesion. So what were you thinking about with this one? Uh, looks like a nodule. Uh, with okay. its shape. Uh, not super cellular. No. It's uh, very pink. Good. Um, so then I see like there's some cells in it, um, really some small vessels in it. Yeah. It looks. Um, but not a whole lot going on with it. It looks very bland. Uh-huh. Good. What kind of what kind of cells do you suspect that these these spindle cells are? If you had to guess a category, what would you guess? Uh, fibroblasts. Yeah, good. I think so. When you see a lot of collagen and spindle cells and, and um, kind of hypocellular, I always try to think of fibroblasts or myofibroblasts. And for practical purposes, I lump those two together. I feel like, I, and again, I don't know on a cell biology level, but I feel like fibroblasts and myofibroblasts seem to exist on a spectrum based on what they look like and what they stain like. Um, when they really have a lot of purpley cytoplasm, they're probably myofibroblasts. But I see some things that look very thin and stain with actin still. So I don't really know. But yeah, I usually vote for, for fibroblast, myofibroblastic category when I see something that looks collagenous in the background and has thin spindle cells. Um, and then um, the other option you can think of would be neural because neural lesions can look a good bit like fibroblastic lesions. I don't think this one looks neural particularly, but I feel like it's fair to consider neural things and fibroblastic things in the same, in the same breath, so to speak, because they often do have a good bit of overlap um, in them. Okay, good. And we'll, let's look closer at these cells here. Yeah, I think these actually look nicely, like the kind of myofibroblastic cells, kind of like almost like the cells of a nodular fasciitis a bit because they've got that real nice, juicy, abundant purple cytoplasm. And you might think, you know, someone might think, um, you know, smooth muscle because it's a pink nodule, but you can clearly tell here that the collagen in the background is what's making it pink, right? Not the cytoplasm. The cells have their own bluish cytoplasm, which is what fibroblasts and myofibroblasts do. And smooth muscle would actually have abundant pink cytoplasm. Sometimes if you flip your condenser, you can actually see the little wavy bundles. You can barely see it here, but little wavy bundles of collagen in the background that can help you tell all the pink here we're seeing is collagen. And that goes with fibroblastic processes and, and myofibroblastic. All right. So what did, did you have an idea for what the diagnosis might be for this? Uh, intraarticular fibroma. Or mm. like a fibroma of a tendon shape. Yeah, I actually don't know how to make a diagnosis of intraarticular fibroma. It's probably one of those like terms that's used for more than one thing maybe, but maybe this is just a, maybe I skipped that day of fellowship. So I guess that's something I need to do some more reading on. But yeah, what I would call this would be a fibroma of tendon sheath. And okay. usually they do occur like in the distal extremities, but sometimes they can occur closer to the large, more proximal joints. And I think one thing that helps me is it's hypocellular, right? With kind of fibroblastic or myofibroblastic cells. The background's either collagen, sometimes a little mixoid, depending on kind of how the age of the lesion, if it's a younger lesion um, or an older kind of more burnout lesion. I find this to be really helpful. These really thin, compressed, elongated vessels. I would say the word slit-like, but slit-like is already the buzzword for Kaposi sarcoma, which the vessels in Kaposi don't look anything like this, but I would say it would be fair to think that those look slit-like, but I feel like that's a buzzword that's already so entrenched that we can't use that. So I say thin cleft-like vessels. I don't know if that works for you, but that's what I use. Um, you may be able to come up with a better name uh, than me for that. So I think that those are a real nice example of those vessels. The other thing that these do, particularly as they get older and really sclerotic and collagenized, is fibroma of tendon sheath also begin to develop cracking artifacts between the, the, um, the collagen itself. So you'll see these thin cleft-like spaces that are artifactual, like this one here. And then you'll also see these thin spaces lined by endothelial cells. And for those of you at home, in case you're not able to see it well, we'll get closer. You can clearly see there's a nice thin layer of endothelial cells there, a little single lining of endothelium. That tells you they're real vessels. So this is fibroma of tendon sheath. At least that's what I would call it. And when these are young, like proliferative uh, lesions, the, there's a cellular phase that they go through where they look quite a bit like nodular fasciitis. And there is some debate whether some of them may actually be related to nodular fasciitis, because some studies have found similar um, uh, molecular abnormalities in both nodular fasciitis and some um, fibromas of tendon sheath. 
So that's an area that's still a bit under debate. So let's see here if there's anything else. I think that's all the features. So good, that's a nice example of a fibroma of tendon sheath, a pretty big one actually. And oh yeah, that's what I was gonna show. Where's the tendon? Can, can we see actual tendon sheath? Sometimes you can, sometimes not. Depends how much they peeled it off of it. But here, right there, that's tendon. This little, this pink parallel bundle of fibroblasts with dense, dense pink collagen in the background, that is dense, regular connective tissue. And when you see fibroblasts with a bunch of collagen arranged in a bundle like this, the three main things that you think of is tendon, ligament, and fascia. And they all, to me, look, at a close-up look, look identical. It's just a matter of, is it a, a thick thing tying two bones together or tying a muscle to a bone? Or is it under, between the subcutis and the muscle? It just it matters the context where you are. But uh, that's a nice uh, thing in there. The, uh, for those of you at home who don't know this, the, when you see spindle cells in a pink fascicle, there are three things that can be, not just, there's dense regular connective tissue, which is tendon, um, ligament, fascia, that's number one. Number two is nerve, and number three is smooth muscle. And I've got a separate video on my channel that explains kind of easily how to tell those apart. So that's a little triad that I picked up from my mentor, Dr. Jay Rowe, one of my greatest mentors who made me decide to become an educator. So he said, those are the three pink pink spindle cell bundles are those. All right, so we've, we got good learning out of that. Fibroma of tendon sheath.